evening and welcome to another IADC update. This evening we are again out in the field as per usual, bringing you all the latest updates taking place here at the Argyle International Airport as we prepare ourselves for the operation of this airport. Of course, we would have told you that other things are taking place simultaneously alongside the construction of the Agal International Airport to enhance the tourism product here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And one of those things is the recreation of the Cayo village here at the Agal site. Now, previously we showed you one experimental house that was constructed here by the team from the Netherlands along with some of our local persons here in St. Vincent and uh, well the team from the Netherlands has long left but the local team continued the construction of these houses. We have seen the, 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 the reconstruction of at least another two of those houses and one of the main drivers behind this part of the project is a gentleman that we know as Erasto and he's here to tell us about the work that they are continuing to do here on the Kaya site. So Erasto, good evening and welcome to the IADC update. Good evening Jennifer, thank you for the welcome. <laughs> Thanks and it's good to see you again and, and thank you for agreeing to chat with us. Um, for those who don't know you, because the whole thing is know you as Erasto, what is, what is your correct name? My correct name is Erasto Robertson. Erasto um, some people would know me as Maxwell as well. But Erasto is the correct name. Erasto is the correct name. Yes. All right, so we're calling you right all the time. Right, you're <laughs> right all the time, yeah. Okay, now Erasto, you guys have continued the work here after um, Dr. Hoogland and his team would have left St. Vincent. Of course, they did the experimental house behind us with your help and the other members of the team. They have gone, but the team has continued the work. Yes. Tell us what has been happening so far and how it has really been going for you. Okay, we could say we give thanks that things been going pretty okay up until now. We've been uh, well supported by the forestry department. We've been well supported by the national parks, tourism, and of course IADC. And we're really happy for the support we're getting. Our major challenge would have been the selection of material in that um, we need special material. We say special in that the material has to be material that could use for this particular purpose. And here was where we had some challenges. But um, we realized that to get the best material, the team has to go out in the field. So the team has been going out in the field. We have been to Richmond Mountain. We've been to Cumberland Mountain. We've been to the coastal area of Cumberland. And um, places like Rabaka, we've been to Rabaka. As a matter of fact, the reason that the, you're not seeing more of our team here today is because most of the team is out at Rabaka harvesting rose. You'll notice that we have some rose who are fresh green on the side here, just putting them to get quail. They're out there harvesting and the truck is making a couple trips to bring the rose in. Yeah. Now, in terms of getting this structure up, I know this one took about two weeks. Yeah. What is the average time that it's been taking your team to get these up? Okay, the thing is, if we have all the material on spot, a house like this would take us two weeks. Mm -hmm. If we have to go and get the material, some of the materials are not very nearby. So we definitely have to make some um, effort to get them out of the um, mountains. So we've been here laboring here and these for about what, seven, eight weeks. And I think we maybe have another three, four weeks here. However, I think we've been building, the confidence has been building and um, the skills been getting a little neater and things have been, have been improving. So we are confident that when we reach over to that big house over big there, house. we would be ready to take that forward. Yeah, it seems, I, I have seen the, the layout for the, the footings on the ground and it seems pretty big. You want to give us an indication of as to how big that one is going to be? It really is big. It's like two of these others put together to make that single one. Okay. We, we did the layout because the, the, the orte is very hard, Jennifer. Extremely hard. And on a rainy day when things are, uh, we haven't been getting much rainy days. But whenever the soil is wet, we do soil work. And that's really the reason we have um, already laid that out. So it's any time now we have already had some post. Uh, we need to have some rafters. We need some more lats and lintels and stuff like that. 
but we get in there and it's just a matter of time before we get on to this one this would be finishing in next by wednesday we'll be finishing on this fourth one okay so the structure is up and the the, the road so that we see you laying out in the sun that is to cover this one that is to cover this one um we we would have learned from some errors earlier we went in the field and harvested a lot of rose and brought it in and stockpile. It wasn't stockpiled in good conditions, so we lost quite a bit of it. Now we're learning that we should cut our rose, quail it for a while and just apply it. Then when we get to that point again, we cut rose again, quail it and then apply it so again. So you bring as necessary, as don't stockpile. Yeah, we, we get to realize we operate on a needs basis. Go for this stuff when you're ready for them. Don't stockpile because you have problems stockpiling them. Okay. Now persons would see you playing with something in your hand. It's not a toy. You want to tell us what uh, that is? Now, um, this is the stuff that we are binding with. We are actually binding with maho. Maho is the bark of the maho tree. Not to be mistaken by the blue maho, it's the bone maho. This one is in the wild and our farmers have been using it for centuries now. Tying wood and tying bags and stuff. Very strong material. This is what we're using for binding for most parts. Mm. We are also using cheney. Cheney is that um, big dashing like something you see hanging on these rocks. The leaves are the cheney. The, the stalks of the leaves are very strong when gathered at its right state. Mm. So we are using cheney as well. So it's basically cheney and maho. Well, the rest of it was really good for you to take some time from what you're doing there to chat with us. And I'm happy to see that real progress is being made on the reconstruction here of these Kaya huts. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for coming, Jennifer, because um, we know what we are doing here means a lot to a lot of people. And when the message gets out by way of the, your program, we are happy. So you're, the, you're a winner, I'm a winner. National Parks is very happy to uh, be part of this project. And... Uh, when, when we could publicize it, the yeah. National Park is yeah. happy. That's right. Yeah. We are happy too, and we're happy to publicize it. Thank you so much. Yes, Jennifer, right. you're welcome. Yeah. Okay, well, this is it from here. As you've heard, real progress is being made on the reconstruction of the Kaya village. So we are encouraging you to just keep supporting this project, and maybe you could pass by and you know say hi to the guys and see what they're doing every once in a while and give them the encouragement they need to persevere to the end here. Now we're going to move from here and take you to some other parts of the Argyle International Airport site to show you what is happening. Thanks for staying with us. Don't move. Well, thank you for staying with us. We have moved around to the Stubbs area, well, the Mount Cook area to be precise, where last week we showed you that they had basically broken away the wall at the main road and they have started doing some clearing to facilitate the construction of the road that is going to be put in here on the southern end of the runway going all the way back to Warku. Now we are back here today and we have seen a tremendous amount of progress being made here on this road. Now they have not only broken over the wall but they've already cleared, removed the grass and the soil and they are basically doing some some soil compaction. They are also constructing a drain down there and the road will literally pass over that. Well, that will form part of the road. Anyway, going all the way back around to Stubbs Bay, then wrong to the Warwick area to join the existing road that is there. Well, this road is being constructed and I have been told that it will soon be completed and placed into operation. Now, last week we told you that the road on the northern end that is in front of the Agal primary school that we have reconstructed going to Waraku that that road should have been open last Wednesday which would have been the 4th of May now that planned opening did not materialize so we are asking persons to continue using the access road across the Argyle Gardens going across the runway that is still available and you are being asked to continue using that road until further notice when we are ready to redirect you and you know absolutely ready that things are in place and all is well we will let you know that that road is no longer in use and we will tell you what the alternative road or roads will be so stay tuned that information will be forthcoming as soon as we 
have it for you now in addition to the roads being done here we are also seeing some finishing work being done on the drains around the terminal building so we're gonna go across there and see exactly what's taking place so that we can show it to you as well stay with us we're gonna go across to the terminal building Well, thank you so much for staying with us. We have moved around to the terminal building area. Of course, we are standing on the aprons. And uh, last week, I noted that they were doing some finishing work on the drains that they've put in, in around here. And now that I'm back, they've completely covered the drains, which means that that drainage work is completed. Of course, they have others going on around the site. But this area, they have finished with the, the drainage work that they've been doing. And we're seeing this large open area. Not sure what it is all about, but I have with me in Romel Oliver who is right now responsible for the landside work here at the Agal International Airport and he's gonna give us a status update as to where we are what we're looking at and what we have remaining basically to be done here so Romel I know I caught you off guard I know you weren't prepared for this but you're here and as, as much as you can tell us we would appreciate about what we're looking at what's going on and what is left to be done all right sure so we are just north of the passenger terminal building um just south of the 191 well the drain that leads to the 191 crossing the drain that um, you just mentioned that was just covered is the main collector drain that takes the water from the access road to the terminal building and the parking lot of the terminal it takes all that water and it carries it into the 191 um, river crossing the space just um, east of that drain and just west of between the drain and the apron is a space that the area that, that we'll be preparing to park the ground handling equipment. Um, most of these, if not all of these equipment, have already arrived on site. And um, these are the equipment that will be servicing the aircraft. You know, you're talking about the passenger stairs, your know, dollies, your container lifts. And um, of course, we need a space to park them when they are not in use. And so we'll be preparing this area to house those equipment. There will be a covered parking for some and uh, non covered parking um, for others where we are standing right here now we are actually on the service road not necessarily on the platform the platform is is just um, to the east of us so we are actually on the service road that connects the that goes in front of the passenger terminal building it connects your passenger terminal building to this parking area it also goes around and it will connect to a garage that will be setting up to give maintenance to to these equipment so basically this is really a service area for the for the um for the equipment and for the airport um it's basically pretty much finished the hardest work really that um, was to be done here was to get that drain in and connected to the 191 so all we have to be doing now is basically prepare the platform for parking of the equipment and bring the fence around to the terminal building and basically have this have this site secured okay that is that is some really really good work so the fence it's up to there right now and it's coming it yeah, basically goes around it straddles the the the, the drain mm -hmm. the river yeah. and it basically goes around to the back of the um of the parking area of course the parking area is a secured area it will be within mm -hmm. the fence oh yeah. it's gonna go up on top the hill there no, it doesn't go right off top it basically goes you see where that stone is behind here mm -hmm. where the bus parking where the bus parking yeah. is non-secured and oh. the equipment parking is in secured area okay. so the fence basically passes between those two parking areas and then goes up to the terminal building um, in effect securing the apron the platform we're on mm -hmm. from from the land side okay I, I noticed the the taxi booth around there it, it it appears to me like it's nearing completion what is it the the update on that where is it at construction yeah the taxi booth is um it's pretty much finished i think um the only thing the contractor has left to do there is to put down um some tiles mm -hmm. and to be honest um the reason why he hasn't put down the tiles is because um we haven't selected um a tile that you know these decisions are so subjective everyone has their own liking yeah so um you know as soon as we, put, we select those tiles, it's a small bin it's about 600 square feet mm -hmm. so um you know we can have those tires down in about a day or two okay on the land side area which you're responsible for is there any what any major thing left to be done or are we seeing the the the, the light at the end of the tunnel yeah the land side facilities are, are pretty much um you know 
substantially complete. As a matter of fact, if this airport were to, you know, if you, if you say we want to start operation um, within a week or two, we have everything in the fire station, we have everything in the control tower, the substations are equipped, the terminal building has the, has the basic amenities too. To, to operate yeah and so basically what we are doing you know in the next month or two uh, putting in things in terms of being like you know the, the concessions the shops um, things that are not really necessary absolutely necessary for operation but things that um, you would like to have so that is desirable. That desirable to have your concessions um, program going when we when, when, when we start okay and folks were asking us about the seating in the terminal building the departure lounge when do we expect to see that going well, the seating has been on site in the terminal building since last year, September, to be honest, right? It's just that it's one of the last things we want to do. Um, you know, just before we're ready to operate, we'll give the inside a good cleaning down. And we don't want to, you know, do that cleaning with the seats down. They're going to have posters going okay. through the seats and so on. And then they're going to have things falling from the roofs. Yeah. And then, so when we do that cleaning, you know, and then we basically put on the seats and, and, and we're ready to go. It doesn't make sense putting them, them, them down now when it's um, not operating. And the painting of the building is also going to be one of the last things we do. One of the last things we want to do again. Um, you know, once we have construction going on out here, um, areas enough paved, we have trucks moving up and down, the place is pretty hot. So um, um, we're doing some work on the apron in terms of, um, you know, trucks are moving up and down the apron. So if you paint to all the, you know, we're afraid that um, the dust and so will um, mess up our paint job. Mm -hmm before the open. So it's one of the last things um, really we want to do is to paint the outside of the building. Okay. Well, Romel, thank you very much for the information. You've been quite informative. I'm sure the audience appreciate getting those information. So thank you for speaking with us and thank you for watching. We will see you again next time.